Hey everybody, welcome back to the Light Side Music Reactions. Today, we have another song, another music video that we're going to react to, and this one was by request. It was posted in the comments of one of my other videos by Robert Faust 1238. And here's a shout out to Robert. Thank you for recommending this. Um, he recommends that I check out the song, God We Need You Now. And I've heard several songs with similar titles, um, but I went ahead and looked it up online, and I found that there is a version by Struggle Jennings and Caitlin Curtis. And I don't know if I've ever heard this song before. I don't recognize it, um, but we're going to go ahead and check it out. Um, it's called God We Need You Now. And so if you'll just uh, pull up a chair and uh, sit back and relax and watch with us as we react. And also, if you want to see me react to a specific song... Uh, or a specific artist, go ahead and comment in the section down below and let me know what you'd like to hear, and uh, maybe I'll get to your uh, request as well. Um, but anyway, we're going to go ahead and check this out. Um, Struggle Jennings and Caitlin Curtis, God We Need You Now. Okay, patriotic theme. The world getting crazy, baby, chill. Don't medicate, just meditate. You waking up now, well, baby, you hella late. Educate, look at what's going on, let it resonate, accelerate. Find your inner hunger like you never ate. The agenda is to push the hate. Separate and segregate. Don't celebrate quite yet. The storm is coming, cue for heaven's sake. The violence that they demonstrate. Instigate and penetrate the values of our country and our God is what they desecrate. Okay, this is something a little bit different. We haven't reacted to something like this on the channel before. Um, this is a, kind of a modern rap style uh, song. You know, he's doing the rap lyrics. Uh, um, and it's got the, you know, patriotic message. Like you can, this is one thing. Um, uh, a lot of the, the uh, heavier rock and rap lyrics, uh, some, some of the songs, um, I really can't get into because a lot of times you can't make out the lyrics and stuff. In fact, uh, my band, uh, Crusade, um, we did some heavier stuff, and uh, we were also fans of some heavier Christian rock, uh, Christian metal, and stuff like that. Um, but a lot of times, uh, you know, some of the bands, you couldn't make out any of the lyrics, and it kind of defeated the point for us. You know, I mean, if you're a Christian band, I mean, the point is that you're wanting to get a message across. And, uh, you know, for, for somebody that's, uh, that sees their music as a ministry... Um, you want the lyrics to come through and people to understand the message without having to look up the lyrics and follow along. Like, for example, if they were just listening to the radio and heard your song coming on, you would want them to be able to understand the lyrics and be able to get the message from that. Um, this guy, his lyrics are pretty clear here. I like this. Um, I like the, the music. Um, it sounds pretty interesting. Um, sounds like he's got a patriotic theme here. Uh, this must be Struggle Jennings. And I imagine Caitlin Curtis is going to come on at some point and sing with him. Uh, but looking back at the lyrics here, the world's getting crazy, baby, chill. You know, some modern uh, slang. Uh, don't medicate, just meditate. Okay. A little bit of slam on the drug culture. You know, that's that's something I've been concerned about, too, is uh, you learn more and more about uh, how um, our society medicates us. Uh, for the slightest little things, you know, depression and anxiety. I'm not saying that those are minor things, but uh, a lot of times our first response is to go to medication and to drugs. And uh, not, not just illicit drugs, but pharmaceuticals in general. Um, you know, they're, it's, it's an amazing thing that you use. I mean, um, I've had my medical issues before and I've taken medication for them. Uh, but that's not always the first step you want to go to. Uh, you don't always want to go straight to medication uh, and uh, particularly with children, I think about, you know, in our schools and stuff and putting them on Ritalin and all that kind of stuff um, at the first sign of trouble or anxiety or whatever they may be going through difficult, what, what, you, what they may classify as a difficult child sort of thing. And a lot of times medication uh, they have discovered over the years. And, and of course, this isn't medical advice. You know, I'm just a uh, layman. I give my personal opinion. So if you want medical advice, you know, get that from a professional. Um, but uh, just from a, a, a layman's standpoint and perspective, it seems like if we jump first to medication, 
then uh, a lot of times we're just covering up the symptoms and not dealing with the root problems of what is causing this anxiety or causing this negative behavior. And I've worked in the uh, medical field for uh, over a decade um, you know, in different settings uh, with children and with adults. And so I've seen um, how medication can help, but I've also seen how therapy can help without medication. And so um, you have to be, you have to find the proper balance between medication and, and uh, just treating it without that. And also the spiritual aspect of it too is, uh, you know, you've got your medication that you can go to the medical field. Uh, you can go to the psychotherapy aspect of it. And there's also the spiritual aspect of it. You know, uh, your faith uh, can help you a lot. And I've seen that firsthand as a pastor and a minister myself through the years is how important a person's faith is uh, to help with their recovery from whatever it is they may be going through. I've experienced myself um, how my faith has helped me personally through a lot of my issues and people around me. I've seen it time and time again. Uh, so don't medicate, just meditate, you know, um, you know, med meditation is kind of more of a general, generic kind of uh, terminology. Um, but from a Christian perspective, uh, you know, don't just medicate, don't just take drugs for this thing. Don't just turn to medical science, but turn to God, you know, pray, you know, talk to God, uh, see what he can do for you. Uh, you know, uh, God, uh, Jesus is described in the Bible as the great physician. That, uh, you know, uh, medical science is a wonderful thing, but where man's medical science may fail, God still perseveres. So I like that. Don't medicate, just meditate. Meditate. You wake it up now. Well, babe, you hella late. <laughs> That's interesting. You know, um, you know, we're getting to a point to where a lot of people are starting to wake up and get what they call based sort of thing you start to realize what's going on in the world around us and there have been others of us that have been saying for years uh what is going on and people have always dismissed it now people are starting to wake up well baby you're a little bit late he's saying educate look at what's going on and let it resonate you know don't just if, if you see what's going on you know share the word spread the word let people know educate them uh look at what's going on let it resonate accelerate find your inner hunger like you never ate. Oh boy. Yeah, the preacher in me is going to come out for a second here. Find your inner hunger like you never ate. So it's like seek that food, that spiritual food. Um, you know, from a spiritual, from a, from a Christian standpoint, uh, you know, you think of Jesus where uh, he spoke to uh, the woman at the well that came to him. There, he, he went to her. She didn't come to him. He went to her and he said, uh, let me draw water from your well. And she said, uh, you know, why do you come here looking for water? And he said, I have, I am the living water. I am the bread of life. You drink of this well that I present to you, you'll never thirst again. You eat of the bread of life that I give and you'll never hunger again. And of course, he wasn't speaking of spiritual uh, hunger and spiritual thirst. Uh, or not, not physical hunger and physical thirst, but rather spiritual hunger and spiritual, for, spiritual thirst. Uh, you know, if you taste and see that God is good is another scripture um, if we taste from the river of life that God gives us, if we sample from the bread of life, that is Jesus Christ himself, then we'll never hunger again. We'll never thirst again, spiritually speaking. And, uh, you know, we'll live forever if we follow him to where he's going to prepare a place for us. And uh, once again, it doesn't mean that we're not going to die in this life, that our, our physical bodies aren't going to die, but spiritually we will live forever. You know, even though these temporary bodies will die, our souls will live on forever in paradise with him if we simply just follow him. Accelerate, find your inner hunger like you never ate. You know, hunger and thirst for righteousness, as Jesus said. Agenda is to push the hate, separate and segregate. Oh my goodness, how true is that? You know, the world around us, and I think it comes from all sides of the political spectrum, is that uh, they're pushing division and trying to divide us. And that, that's one of the things I hate about uh, racial tensions anymore in particular, and not just racial tensions, but other tensions that we have, but that's a big one, is that uh, so many uh, forces, spiritual forces, uh, being pushed by political agendas uh, in this country and around the world are seeking to divide us and to separate us, to get us to focus on what makes us different 
rather than focusing on how we're the same, to unite us. You know, the scripture says a house divided against itself cannot stand and it will fall. And that it's the same way with our country. If our country is divided against each other, then we're doomed. We're heading for destruction. And uh, the agenda is to push the hate, separate, and segregate. And we need to rally against that. We need to push back against the hate, the segregation, uh, not just racially speaking, but uh, segregating us based on political beliefs and standpoints. You know, as a Christian, um, I've found that, uh, you know, I grew up Methodist, and uh, the drummer from our, our band was Baptist. And so when she joined the band, um, we, uh, we Methodists in the group were always thinking about, okay, my goodness, uh, there's so much that we disagree on. You know, where are we going to clash with our theology? And the more we sat down and discussed it with each other and shared our views, we found that uh, we agreed on almost everything except we had different terminology for it. You know, there was more that united us than divide us. There was more that we agreed on than we disagreed on. And over the years, we had just let that division come between us because we misunderstood each other. We were using different terminology, different ways of expressing the same philosophy. Now, there, there are minor differences, of course. Um, but as uh, John Wesley, founder of Methodism, once said, and I, I quote him because, you know, I, I studied him and I have a background studying some of his theology, uh, is he said, in the essentials, unity, and non-essentials, liberty, and in all things, charity. And so, in other words, um, you know, you find the stuff that you agree on and the things that are important. You make sure you agree on those. And then the little things, you just kind of let it slide. You agree to disagree. And in all things, whether you agree or disagree, you express your opinions with love and respect, and you learn from each other that way. You're going to catch more flies with honey than with vinegar sort of thing. You know, you season your flavor. You become salt and light to the world. Salt that flavors and light that attracts and that sheds uh, truth on the situation. But you do it in a way that is expressing love and compassion and understanding with it. And uh, more often than not, you'll, you'll pull more people to your side um, if you can convince them using uh, tactics uh, that sh share your love for them and your compassion and your understanding and your willingness to hear their viewpoint rather than if you just are constantly um, fighting in opposition and struggling against them and causing them to put up their defenses and fight back, spiritually speaking and conversationally. Um, agenda is to push the hate, separate and segregate. Don't celebrate quite yet. The storm is coming. Cue for heaven's sake. Violence that they demonstrate, instigate, and penetrate. There's a storm coming. Uh, there's a lot of truth in that. Look out, guys. Yeah, you know, Jesus said, "Be prepared. Be watching. You don't know the t day or the, the hour when the the Lord is coming back. Same time, uh, you know, He gives us the signs of the times to watch for when the tr great tribulation, the great trouble, is coming." And he tells us what's going to happen in the future. We already know ahead of time what's going to happen. And uh, he says there's a storm coming. So be prepared. Be watching. And that way you're prepared when it happens. Violence that they demonstrate, instigate, and penetrate. The values of our country and our God is what they desecrate. <laughs> yeah, this country, uh, you know, there's uh, a lot of debate about whether the, the United States is a Christian nation. Um, and uh, that is really uh, an interesting debate to have. Um, there's no doubt that it, it originally was, and it was always intended to be that way. You look at the teachings of our founding fathers, and even in the, our founding documents, like the Declaration of Independence, several times, many times, uh, they make reference to God and providence, which is another reference to God giving his, you know, pro providing over us, giving us his protection, and how they they time and time again uh, expressed their views that in order to be a great nation we would have to maintain our faith in God um, and to rely on him to help us to maintain the integrity of a nation that we seek to have. Uh, the values of our country and our God is what they desecrate and we are seeing it desecrated today. My fighters ain't no featherweight pulling out the seams of the fabric that they fabricate. They fabricate. Defeat us, lies, manipulate, intimidate through fear and force, forcing us to sit and wait. 
till we come together, congregate, and then we liberate. Till we come together, you know, we become united, we unify, and we stand strong and put up a unified front. We stand strong for what is true. And that's a, uh, that's a direct quote from one of my band's songs, Crusade songs. Check out the link, uh, description below. I'll put a link to our channel over there. And uh, uh, the song Craft that our band did, that's a direct line from that. Stand strong for what is true. Stand strong for the crucified son. In your darkest hour, he'll stand for you. Stand strong for the Holy One. Actually, that's not, uh, that's not Craft. That's the song uh, Stand. Uh, but anyway, uh, check that out sometime if you want to. And that'll be in the description below. Uh, till we come together, congregate. You know, the scripture tells us as Christians we need to keep coming together as a congregation. And to not neglect that. Not to neglect meeting together and worshiping God together. And uh, sharing with each other. Uh, you know, church on Sunday morning or Saturday or Wednesday night or whenever you can get together. Uh, the time and place isn't really important. The important thing is that we are united. We put up that united front. We stand strong together. We, we come together, congregate, and then we liberate. Jesus came, came to become a liberator. He, become, he came to set the captive free. You know, no more slavery to uh, slave masters in this world or to sin or to Satan or to anything. He came to set us free. And we seek that liberation. All right, let's get back into this uh, song. This is really cool. I'm liking this. Thank you for the recommendation. I like this imagery in the background. People marching with their flags, American flags. Cut the grass till we see the serpents. Let's go back to the lyrics here. Okay. Uh, they feed us lies, manipulate, intimidate through fear and force, forcing us to sit and wait till we come together, congregate, and then we liberate. Praying that you give me strength to find some love amongst the hate. And I pray that all the time. Uh, the, it's so easy uh, as we see the the... The war against faith, the war against Christianity, and uh, you know, not just physically and by you know, with with uh, weapons of warfare, but on a spiritual battlefield, uh, we see the war pressing so hard, uh, the world pressing so hard against us, and uh, you know, the the violence that they perpetrate against us physically, but also the threats that they come at us. Uh, you know, one day. Uh, we will not be able to gather together as we do freely now and to worship together. Uh, there's that storm coming, and when that when that happens, then the world is going to just declare all-out war on us, on Christians and people of faith in general, and they're going to say, it's our way or the highway. You worship as we tell you, or we're going to chop off your heads. Yeah, you do what we say or you're dead. And uh, that's a scary thought, but that time is coming. You know, we've seen persecution uh, of the church throughout the centuries. Um, and again, we've seen the church, you know, hasn't always been uh, guiltless either. There's been some atrocities committed by the church through the centuries. And we have to learn from that. And not, uh, uh, ba uh, not Basically, that's what they did, is they, uh, what's the lyrics here? Uh, find love amongst the hate. They, they, instead of finding love amongst the hate, they responded with retaliation. They fought fire with fire. They took up the sword. You know, Jesus said, he who lives by the sword shall die by the sword. You know, when Peter tried to defend him in the Garden of Gethsemane, he took the sword and tried to chop off the guy's ear. And Jesus said, stop, stop, put down your weapons. He said, my kingdom is not to be won with, with violence. It's not to be won with uh, swords. Is to be one on a spiritual level. We don't fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities, spiritual darkness in heavenly places. And uh, basically, he said, uh, basically, what he was saying is, you need to find some love amongst the hate. You know, fight hate with love, fight the darkness with light, 
uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, had a similar quote to that, is that you, you, you can only extinguish the darkness with light. And so, uh, praying that you give me strength to find some love amongst the hate. And that's important for us as Christians to, as we respond to the hatred out there, the division, that we respond by uh, spreading love and unity and uh, fighting darkness with light. Praying that you give me strength to find some love amongst the hate. Marching on these streets of blood till I see the golden gates. Beautiful imagery here um, and the, the lyrics are just fantastic troubadour of troubled souls what of god's servants blades blades out cut the grass till we see the serpents and so uh yeah um you think of cutting the grass with your blades you know br uh, turning our swords into plowshares is a scriptural thing um you know taking our swords which were meant to uh, be weapons of battle, weapons of warfare, and turn them into uh, tools that we use to cut the grass. And when you cut the grass, basically uh, the primary function of that is to, uh, or, or not just the, the, the grass, but like your grain, your wheat, that kind of stuff, is to, to make food. Um, but also, and to feed people, you know, again, going back to that illustration of not just physical food, but spiritual food as well, from a Christian standpoint. But blades out and cut the grass till we see the serpents. The serpents hide in the tall grass. And so as we cut down the grass, um, those of you that ever worked in the hay fields, as I did growing up on a farm, uh, you know that uh, when that grass gets high, uh, before that first cutting, uh, there are serpents, there are snakes out in the grass. And that's where that phrase comes from, snake in the grass. Um, the higher the grass, the, hard, the easier it is for them to hide. And the harder it is for the, them to for us to see them hiding. And you go out walking in that tall grass, and you're pretty likely to get bit. But if we take our swords, beat them into plowshares, and use that to cut down the grass, then we're going to see the serpents in hiding when they come at us. Blades out, cut the grass till we see the serpents. Man, I love this imagery. Okay, let's get back into the song. Okay, now this is Caitlin Curtis. Dance with the devil way too long. Oh God, come back home. Let's go back to the lyrics. Okay. Oh, one day I hope you see the truth. This puppet show stays on because of you fools. <laughs> you know, um, I think of Metallica and their album Master of Puppets. You know, you think of a, a, a puppet master and the song Master of Puppets. Uh, I love the imagery in that too because it talks about the master that, that overruns, uh, overrules us uh, and uh, play, plays us by... Tying us to puppet strings and manipulating us. Uh, so much of that going on in the world. Um, and the puppet show stays on because of you fools. Oh, one day I hope you see the truth. We've been dancing with the devil way too long. I know it's fun, but you get ready to pay your dues. Oh, God, come back home. This crazy world is filled with liars and abusers. We need you now before we're too far gone. Okay. Oh, God, come back home. Uh, the final chapter of the book of Revelation. Uh, you know, the Re Revelation basically tells the prophetic uh, story of what's going to happen in the future and how there's going to be wars and rumors of wars. And you know, that's from the book of Matthew. But uh, it ties into Revelation uh, to where there's going to be all this death and destruction and stuff. And it's going to be turmoil and tribulation, the likes of which this world has never seen. But in the end, uh, God is coming back home to get us and to take us home to be with him. So in the very last chapter of Revelation, one of the very last lines is, uh, Lord, come back. Uh, the Lord is coming back. Even so, come, Lord Jesus, come. You know, so in other words, uh, we want God to come back and it's going to happen. All this stuff is going to happen. And even, even so, even as all this stuff happens around us, we say, come on back. We're waiting for you. 
oh God, we need you now. Uh, or as the song, you know, the, uh, let's see. I just closed off the lyrics here. There it is. But as the song title, God, we need you now. Yeah, that's basically it. I just get back into it. I li I'm liking this a lot. God, we need you now. Ooh, that's powerful. Uh, before I comment on those lyrics, this video, um, you know, it's showing them marching with the flags and stuff. Um, this kind of imagery is controversial today, probably. I imagine this video... Um, let's see, let's look at it. Uh, it came out three years ago. Uh, September 8th, 2020 is when they released this video, music video. And it's got 416,000 likes. Uh, over 28 million views. Almost 29 million views. And so, um, I imagine this, vid this music video is probably controversial. Although, personally, I'd never heard of it. Never heard of either of these artists. Never heard this song before. Never even knew it existed until it was just suggested for this channel. But seeing the imagery on this video, I can see, you know, three years ago, what was going on. Yeah, you had the the uh, the BLM riots, and you had uh, the uh, uh, Charlottesville uh, thing, you know, right about that time, maybe a year before that or so. Uh, and you had all sorts of turmoil, race issues going on um and uh particularly when i think about the charlottesville and the backlash from that and the imagery from that of the people uh, marching through the streets with their tiki torches and their flags and stuff like that that was a very dark image that was very dark imagery and when you heard what they were chanting you could tell that you know there was racism in what they were saying but at the same time I remember when that first started, when that when that protest, when they announced they were having that protest, there were people that were there, obviously the racists, the neo-Nazis and stuff like that, that were up there with their, uh, you know, tiki torches chanting, Jews will not replace us, um, and, you know, sorts of things like that, and, uh, you know, purify our blood sort of thing, don't let them, uh, I mean, that that stuff is horrible, that stuff is pure racist. And uh, the president, uh, President Trump, was right to uh, to uh, condemn that as he did in his speech, um, in his response to that. Um, and at the same time, it was controversial because he said there are people also there uh, that were there for right reasons that were not racists. Um, and a lot of people, you know, the the media went haywire with this and took the ball and ran with it, um, saying that he said there's very fine people on both sides. Well, I, I, I heard the speech. I listened to the, the entire thing. And in context, he literally said, I'm not talking about those racists. He said, I condemn them outright. But the other people that were there, just because they opposed the, the destruction of uh, the statues, which was the issue at the time, uh, there are people there protesting because they're, they're American patriots. And he said, I'm not talking about those racists over there that are chanting the, the anti-Semitic slogans, the racist slogans and stuff like that. Um, but of course, you know, like it said in the song uh, there in the first verse, talked about how the, the forces arise to manipulate us, to mislead us, and to divide us. And uh, we, we saw that full force in the aftermath of Charlottesville. And uh, Charlottesville itself uh, you know, those racists that were marching there, those were, they, they were a big part of that, uh, you know, causing the division and the lies and the hate. Uh, but, yeah, there was, you, you know what I mean? You know, comment down below if you disagree with me, but if you do, back it up. You know, put, put uh, you know, direct quotes and uh, links, if you can, to the actual video. Um, because I can guarantee you that a lot of times what we heard through the media was just sound bites. And when you listen to the whole thing in context, you realize that uh, you know, there's more to the picture. 
and uh, there were people there that were there for the right reasons because they were standing for uh, their country and for their uh, their beliefs in our American heritage and trying to uh, make America great again uh, and not in a racist way and not in a divisive way but in a way that is just simply seeking to go back to the traditions and the values that made this country great um, and you may disagree with uh, the tactics that they take uh, in trying to accomplish that goal uh, but personally I believe it's a great um, it's a great thing to aspire to to go back to the original intent of what our founding fathers and uh, the previous generations were seeking when they founded this great nation uh, that it wasn't built on racism uh, there were racist elements in it but they were fighting against that in whatever limited way they could. And uh, like I said, we learn from the past mistakes that we make, and we try to grow from it. And uh, today we build upon what they started and uh, hopefully make this world a better place uh, by causing unity instead of division. Okay, let's get back into it. Okay, um, let's get into the lyrics here. Uh, let's see, let's find where he, okay. Oh, one day I hope, okay, we, we already did that one. Um, we need you now. Okay, I know the truth is hard to swallow, just digest it. Suspected something's going on, but chose to just neglect it. So, uh, you know, somebody once said that, uh, uh, what, what was that quote? Um, I can't remember the exact quote right now off the top of my head, but basically, um, evil is allowed to prosper when we choose to do nothing about it. And so when we see, you know, I, I don't go as far as to say silence is violence, literally violence, but in, in a sense, in a sense, uh, there's a little bit of truth in that in the, in the sense that if you see something wrong going on around you, uh, I believe personally that we have a responsibility you know um, from the superhero sort of thing spider-man with great power comes great responsibility that's a biblical concept and that's why uh, you know Jesus and the and Bible and throughout the Bible New Testament and Old Testament talk about protecting the innocent and standing up for those that are being uh, persecuted you know Jesus came to set the captive free uh, etc etc and so um, we have a duty of a responsibility as Christians to stand up against what is going on around us. When we see something wrong, we have to try to make it right. Um, suspected something's going on, but chose to just neglect it. You know, um, when we face Judgment Day, we stand before God, we won't only be judged for what we did wrong, what we did wrong. You know, we think of Jesus uh, when he gave the parable about uh, Judgment Day, and uh, the people were standing before him, and he said, uh, you know, when I was naked and hungry, you fed me and clothed me. And they say, well, when did we do this? And he said, uh, when you did it for the least of these, my brothers, you did it for me. The same way, um, he said, I was naked and, and hungry, and you didn't feed me, and you didn't clothe me. And they say, well, well, when did we see you and didn't do that? And he said, as long as you neglected to do that for these, the least of these, you neglected to do it for me. So not only are we judged by what we do that we shouldn't do, the sins of commission, but also for our sins of omission, for the things that he expected us to do that are good that we failed to do. Suspected something's going on, but just chose to neglect it. Deflected by some breaking news, oh, we just accept it. Expected just to fall in line and follow their perspective. Don't question their objective, but I got a lot of questions. How these kids molested, but nobody's been arrested. Read it in the Testament. These children are protected. Okay, this reminds me of another song that my band did, my band Crusade. Uh, it's a song that I wrote called uh, Mouths of Babes. And I wrote this song, um, basically, he, it seems like he's reading the same headlines, hearing the same stories that I heard when I wrote that song about the, the church. You know, here's an example where we, we're not talking about the world harming children, but the church 
And we need to stand up against these things. When we make mistakes, when our friends, our neighbors, our community makes mistakes, it's our duty to stand up against that as well. And uh, so um, I wrote this song, basically, and it seems like here they're referencing, you know, the, the, the abuse of children by the Catholic Church. And again, that's not the entire church. That's not to condemn all Christians. That's not to condemn all Catholics. That's not to condemn all the leadership in the Catholic Church. Uh, but there were elements within it that were doing those things. That was widespread. And when I heard about that, um, that helped me to, to inspire me to write one of the verses to that song. Uh, help me, forget, forgive me, Father. Help me, Father. I'm trying to think of the lyrics now. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. I've come to pay my dues, pay my penance beneath the robes. I know not what I do. Holy water, rain on me and wash my sins away. Bless me, Father, on my knees. This is how I pray. Is this how I pray? And then the chorus goes on to talking about, um, you know, basically the the chorus kind of summarizes it up: uh, the abuse of children and G Jesus and God's response to that. Uh, but the second verse. I talked about, you know, uh, a, a family situation, you know, abuse within a family. And uh, that was that part of the, the song was inspired by a, per, a story that's personal to me that I heard from somebody that I cared for, I found out that had been abused. And so this was uh, kind of a, a tribute to her and her struggles that she had gone through uh, in that situation. But... Uh, here, back to the lyrics here, he, how he's using this. How these kids molested, but nobody's been arrested. Read it in the Testament. These children are protected. And, of course, that's a reference to, you know, Jesus' words in Matthew chapter 18. You know, when he was speaking about children, he said, Whoever causes one of these little ones to stumble, it'd be better if you were, if, it would be better for you if a millstone were tied around your neck and be cast into the sea. And I've preached about that, that passage before, and I talk about the imagery of that. Is basically Jesus is uh, given the imagery of a mafia hitman. He's like, if you abuse these children, it'd be better for you to be uh, knocked off by the mafia. You know, given cement shoes and tossed into the to the lake, into the river. Um, that's basically what Jesus was saying. He's saying, uh, you'd be better off dead. You'd be better off the victim of a mafia hit. Uh, once I get my hands on you, if you hurt these children, these children are protected. Um, and then later on that same chapter, uh, Matthew 18, he says, uh, take heed that you don't despise any of these little ones. Don't mislead any of these small children. Don't lead them astray. Don't harm them in any way. For I tell you that in heaven, their angels always see the father of my, see the face of my father who is in heaven. So they've got guardian angels watching out for them that God sent. And so uh, you don't want to um, to be one of these people that's abusing children. Um, there will be a price to pay. Even those that seem like they're getting away with it in this life, eventually their time is going to come. They're going to face judgment, and it's not going to be pretty for them. Read it in the Testament. These children are protected. So I'm fighting all these terrorists, both foreign and domestic. Refuse to be a directed a lion, not a sheep. That's the call for us. We need to be lions and not sheep. And of course, there's a biblical illustration of we are sheep, sheep, and he's the shepherd. Uh, and then I'll, I'll I'm not, I don't want to go into too much detail. It's been too long now on this video. Um, but uh, you know, there's a good part of being sheep if we follow the shepherd. But at the same time, we don't want to be sheep just standing by and let let the wolves come in. We need to be lions and be able to stand up to the wolves. Okay, let's get back into. Uh, the video. I'm I'm just going to go ahead and play it the rest of the way through, um, for the sake of time. Can't take it on the cheek. Reference to turning the other cheek. Um, you know, just real quick. Um, you know, Jesus did tell us that when somebody strikes you on one cheek, turn on the other cheek. You know, in other words, don't respond with violence. But at the same time, Jesus wasn't a pushover. You know, we have preached on this before when I talked about the attitudes. Jesus said, blessed are the meek. Um, but that doesn't mean that you are to just go ahead and allow uh, violence to happen. We need to stand up for the innocent, protect those that are being hurt and being persecuted 
and uh, being harmed, especially children. Those that are defenseless and unable to protect themselves. And uh, so a lot of people, when they think about turning the other cheek, uh, they think that Jesus was a pushover. And they, I, I, the, the phrase I use is, they're confusing meekness for weakness. And there's a big difference. You know, Jesus wasn't always, you know, happy-go-lucky, you know, just let live and let live sort of thing. This is the same man, the same man that said, I come to bring peace. He also sa said, I come to bring a sword. And, of course, you know, that is in the end times. He's going to come back and he's going to bring uh, judgment with him. You know, when he was here on earth, he was bringing a message of peace. But there's a time he's coming back. When he comes back, you know, the, the time for peace is over and he's going to, to crush the enemies beneath his feet. Um, and also, um, at the same time, while we are to turn the other cheek and to not resort to violence, at the same time, we are to stand up for the rights of those that are being oppressed and uh, to fight for what's right, uh, whether it be physically, in some cases, which we can get into some other time, way too complex of a, of a topic to, to cover in depth in this video, or whether it just means uh, you know, spiritual warfare fighting the spiritual battle, which is what my band represents, you know, not a crusade of uh, physical warfare of, uh, you know, battles and fighting with guns and knives and swords and stuff, such um, like the, uh, the crusades of history were, but a crusade of a spiritual battle where we're fighting for what's right, fighting for what's good and doing it in a way that with love and with peace, we share the message of faith and hope and love as we anticipate God coming back to bring judgment with himself. Um, so I'm fighting all these terrorists, both foreign and domestic, you know, a reference to, you know, our oath that we take when we're in the military or when we go into public office is we, we make a, uh, an oath, you know, that we are to stand up against uh, those that threaten our country, foreign and domestic enemies alike. Uh, refuse to be directed, not a lion, uh, a lion, not a sheep. Only kneel to my God, so I'm dying on my feet. You know, we won't bow down, we won't bend, we won't break. Back, going back to the Old Testament, the story of the, the the Hebrew children that were thrown into the fiery furnace. He said, you go ahead and throw us in that furnace and burn us to death. Uh, God will protect us, but even if he doesn't, we will not bend, we will not bow, we will not break. We're going to stand strong. And he's repeating that. Um, only kneel to my God. I won't kneel to you. Uh, so if I'm dying, I'm dying on my feet. Silence when we speak, but there's violence in the streets. That's a rebuke, I think, of the phrase, silence is violence. Yep. I've been rolling with the punches. I can't take it on the cheek. I've been rolling with the punches. Can't take it on the cheek. There comes a time when you have to stop turning the cheek. You've only got two cheeks, Right. Somebody hits you on this cheek, you turn the other one, they hit you on that one. You, you've got no other cheeks to turn, <laughs> except for your backside. Um, let's not get into that. But, uh, yeah, I've been rolling with the punches. They've been punching and punching and punching. They've been beating me down, and I can't take it on the cheek anymore. Drink from a glass half full, I'm optimistic. People are sadistic, so vicious and malicious. Uh, so true. So very true. All right, let's get back into the video. Sadistic, vicious, and malicious. Praying for our sisters to overcome our position, or I'm gonna start resisting, and then I pray for forgiveness. Oh, okay. Okay. Now there, he's uh, getting to where he's close to crossing the line, you know, spiritually speaking. He's like praying for assistance to overcome opposition, and that's what we have to do. We have to keep praying. As I said, we are so tempted sometimes to respond to violence with violence you know they keep beating us down and beating us down it's so easy to want to fight back uh, and so he's praying for assistance to overcome that temptation and he says or i'm going to start resisting and then pray for forgiveness and so uh, there are different types of resistance and we have to really walk that fine line you know between uh, you know peace and war uh, when to stand and fight and when to turn the other cheek and so he's saying, I feel it, and I feel it with him sometimes, is I'm praying to God constantly for him to give me courage and to, to keep standing, but to not resort with violence, um, because 
when we do that, that just gives them more ammunition against us. You know, we may win the battle here physically when we resort to violence, but then the devil's got a foothold on us. You know, he has maybe um, gotten us to resort to his tactics. And when we do that, he wins. And so some food for thought there. Some definite food for thought. And not that he's uh, advocating for that, but he's saying, I'm praying for assistance to overcome that temptation. He's saying there's part of me that wants to, to start resisting with physical violence and then pray for forgiveness. You know, there's that old phrase, it's easier to, uh, to go ahead and do what you want to and then ask forgiveness than to ask permission. It may be easier, but in the long run, you're going to suffer for it. Oh, one day I hope you see the truth. I hope it shows on, show, stays on because of you fools. Continues with the verse. And uh, I think that's it. The rest is just a verse. I like her look too. Those glasses she's wearing. She's got the black dress. And the, the big rim glasses. Kind of a... Uh, um, the look she's showing uh, kind of reminds me of, uh, if, if those of you from the 80s and 90s remember MTV back when they showed music, uh, there was a girl on there, she's on Fox News now sometimes as a commentator, her name's Kennedy, that's not a real name, but her, her stage name was Kennedy, and she was on MTV introducing music videos, uh, and this, this reminds me of the look that she had back then, you know, the, the black hair, um, darker outfit usually, um, real attractive outfit sort of thing, and the big rim glasses. Um, I like that look. It looks real good on, on uh, this, uh, uh, the girl singing, uh, Caitlin Curtis. In fact, looking at her, she looks like Kennedy. Nice. Good pipes on that girl. Alright, I'm going to turn down the volume a little bit while I come uh, do some commentary over the final part of this. We've been dancing with the devil way too long. This is my final thought on this. Um, she's talking about, um, you know, we've been dancing with the devil by accepting what the enemy has been doing. Just letting them go ahead and do their destruction, their division, all that kind of stuff. We need to stand up to it. That's true. And that is what my band was all about while we chose the name Crusade. Because we believe it was important for us to stand strong for what is true. But at the same time, to do it with peace, to do it with love. And to, to also do it with the understanding that um, we're not fighting against flesh and blood, but we're fighting a spiritual battle. And so our weapons of war need to be spiritual weapons and not physical weapons. And so a uh, double meaning here when she says, we've been dancing with the devil way too long. We have to be careful that we don't start dancing with the devil by retaliating with physical violence. And I know it's so easy to be tempted to do that. Um, you know, January 6th. Uh, was part of that, I think, uh, some of the people that got involved, um, and I'm not, believe me, when it, when this happened, my first uh, post on Facebook was, you know, hey, if you're going to resort to violence, and stay home, you've got no business doing this, and so um, while I support the right to peacefully protest, I did not, uh, and still do not, support the violence, and never would, uh, but at the same time, I can understand how it would be tempting 
when you're being battered, as he said in these lyrics here, I've been battered, being beaten and battered left and right. You know, how much more do I have to take before I can start to fight back? And uh, and so I can see that. But the problem is, when we do, are we starting to dance with the devil ourselves? When we resort to his tactics, we become his pawns. You know, the puppet master continues to manipulate us and to drag us down with him. And that's what Satan has been trying to do all along. We know the end of the story, those of us that are Christians, we know that the Bible tells how it's going to happen and what the end of this history, you know, this entire planet, the galaxy, the universe is going to be. In the end, God wins. And those of us that are on his side, we win. But at the same time, even though the devil knows that he's going to lose the end, he knows just as well as God does. He knows just as well as uh, those of us who believe the Bible. He knows just as well as we do that he's doomed in the end. But his hatred for God and for his children is so intense that all he wants to do is to drag us down with him. And that's what this battle is about in this life. And so... As we seek to, to stand strong for what is true, as we seek to do what's right, to, to defend the defenseless, and to free the captives, and to continue the work that, that Jesus has left us on the work to do, in, in this world to do, uh, to fight the oppressors and the spiritual uh, principalities in the world around us, at the same time, we are called to do it in a way that doesn't help the enemy to drag us down with him keep keep standing strong friends stand strong and don't resort to the enemy's tactics because when we do he wins all right thank you for that recommendation for that video i really enjoyed it uh, something a little bit different for this channel uh, if you guys enjoyed it as well, and if you enjoyed my reaction, hit that like button. Comment down below if you have some recommendations or just any thoughts you have about this uh, topic we've discussed today, about the song, about the artist, or anything. If you want to let me know a little bit about these artists, uh, since they're brand new to me, you can comment that as well. Uh, and uh, we'll see you next time. Be sure to check out this uh, channel, uh, some of our other playlists. And thank you all that are subscribing and uh, hitting the notification bells. Uh, because when you do that, then you will be notified when we go live for our weekend live streams and any other time we go live. And you can participate with us in the live chat. But anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. We'll see you next time. God bless. Bye, everybody.